This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now, another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast-to-coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled Fair Warning, and we'll thrill to the chase and watch the hunter and the hunted. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment after this very important message. It's new, and it may be for you. We mean the job of aircraft observer in your expanding United States Air Force. It's an exciting new classification. If you're between 20 and 26 and a half years of age, single, with two or more years of college, why not find out how you can become an aircraft observer? Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Captain Hank McLean, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Fair Warning. They say there's a thin hairline between the normal and the abnormal, that all of us walk a kind of mental tightrope where balance is the determining factor in life. This is a story about a man whose balance was good and about another man who had no balance at all. A man whose primary aim in life was to destroy without apparent reason, motive, or pattern. These two men lived in a city whose population was over two million. They were completely unknown to each other, and yet it became the job of one to find the other before he could bring death and misery to an unsuspecting metropolis. It wouldn't be right to do it without giving them some warning. More sporting that way. Always one for fair play. Write to the newspapers? Oh, no, 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 no. Then too many would know they'd all be looking for me. Don't want everybody looking. Man needs his privacy, I know. Write the police. Give the hounds fair warning, write them once a day for a week, and then let the fools try to catch me. Catch me if you can, catch me if you can, like a game. Only I know them. The stupid fools, they won't believe me. They'll go on their plodding way, and only after I've done it will they wake up and start looking. Oh, well. If I can do it once, why, the second time it will be even more fun. And there's nothing I like better than fun. Good, clean, wholesome fun. Come in, Dom. Hey, Hank, how'd you know it was me? Elementary, my dear lieutenant. I have X-ray eyes. Yeah? Well, focus your X-ray eyes on this, Sherlock. Oh, no, not again. Yeah, this makes the fourth. Yeah, same as the others. Getting monotonous. Yeah, you find out anything from the others? Nothing that leads anywhere. Uh, don't sound so cheerful. You know, this could be for real. Sure. So every crackpot letter that comes in here. Last week we got one from a bird. Yeah, I know, I know, Tom. But look, this, the fourth. This one's exactly the same as the other three. Yeah, nuttier than the rest, that's all. Why should anyone who was really going to pull a job like this tip us off? Because anyone who would attempt anything so horrible would naturally have to be mentally unbalanced. Anyone in that condition might write 60 letters. Oh, I'm no psychiatrist. I think we better let Doc Morgan have a look at these things. Maybe he can read something into them. We can't. I still think it's a lot of hooey, Hank. How could he get a hold of the stuff to make it? I don't know the answer to that, Dom. But I think we better start doing some checking just in case. Look, get a hold of Higgins at the lab and get a list of the materials that would go into a thing like this. Let me have the report on the letter. Hmm. Now, let me see how this sounds. To whom it may concern. 
This is my fifth letter to you, and it is different than the others. This is to assure you that being an individual who believes in sportsmanship, I am giving you fair warning. I intend to carry out my plan, and I'm offering you the opportunity, although I'll admit it's a slim one, to stop me. Sometime within the next ten days, I shall prove to you how serious I am about all this. If I'm in the mood, I may write you again tomorrow. Until then, au revoir. <laughs> au revoir. <laughs> Hank, are you going to sit up there all night in the dark? Hmm? Oh, sorry, honey. Yeah, I thought you'd gone to sleep. No, I've been lying here watching you smoke one cigarette after another. You'll stunt your growth. <laughs> yeah, that would never do, would it? What are you worried about, Hank? Well, I'm not exactly worried. I'm just... Sitting up all night with a sick friend? No. It's business, Connie. And a good wife doesn't interfere in the affairs of the police department. No, no, it's not that. What is it, then? Would you rather not tell me? I said it's business, and it's nothing that'll do you any good to know. But it might do you some good to talk about it. And I haven't been talking about anything else in the past two days, for all the good that's done. All right for you. You'll miss me when I'm gone. What do you mean? Have you forgotten I'm going to take the kids up to see Mother next week? Oh, gee, that's right. Gosh, it sort of slipped my mind. <laughs> Back to the days of bachelorhood for <laughs> I me. I bet you'll love it. You can sit there all night, every night, and no one to disturb you. Oh, I don't know. No, 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 don't throw it. I give up. Keep your voice down or the neighbors will call the police. Well, I suppose you're going to take the car and leave me on horseback, oh, huh? you look good on horseback. No, I thought I'd be sweet to you and give the kids a treat. How do you mean? We'll go by train. You know how they love to ride on the You'll train. You'll go by what? By train. What's the matter? Haven't you ever Connie, heard... you're not going anywhere but train next week. What, what are you talking Just about? Just that you're not going to take a train to Mother's. Hey, you're hurting my arm. What's come over you? Are you all right? Oh, I... I'm sorry, dear. It's... It's just that you mustn't take the train. Look, take the car, go by bus, fly, anything, but don't Hank, take... what is it? You're shaking all over. Just promise me, will you? But yes, of course I'll promise you, but... But why? Because it might not be safe to go that way. Might not? Don't you know? No. No, Connie, I don't know. And that's what's so horrible about this whole thing. <laughs> All right, sit down, man. Come on, sit down now. Let me have your attention. Now, this morning we got number six. At least our friend is regular. To prove that he means what he says, he's listed the ingredients he's using. The lab says he knows what he's talking about. So from now on, we're assuming this is not the work of a crank, but a madman who plans to do exactly as he says. There's no need to go into the seriousness of this. I'm sure you can all imagine. So far, the press hasn't got wind of it. We've got to see that they don't until we've caught our man. Dom, let's have the report from the beginning, huh? All the letters have been written on cheap paper. It can be bought most anywhere, and there's no way to trace where it was sold nor who bought it. The writing is a paste-up job. The letters cut from the newspapers. The glue, five-and-dime stuff. Again, no means of tracing it. No fingerprints. No, he uses gloves. Envelopes are stamped, bought at a post office. From the microscopic study of the paper, the lab says there's enough evidence to prove the sender lives in an industrial area. Now, that's our first concrete lead, man. All right, go on, Dom. Report confirms that the writer is a definite psychopathic type, well-educated, probably a good background in engineering and chemistry, chemical engineer. That's about it. I get this, man. According to his fifth letter, he lacked between the 10th and the 20th. Well, today's the 8th. That means we have from two up to 13 days to get him. And it's not going to be easy. Now, there's certain things we'll have to work from. One, the chances are good that he lives alone. Two, that he's not employed. According to Doc Morgan, a man of this type wouldn't be able to hide his abnormalities from people with whom he associated every day. Uh, pull down that map there, will you, Dom? Thanks. Now, look, we've divided the industrial area up into six sections. Now, each section has got to be combed thoroughly. Yeah, they're all done. My last letter. And now, to act upon it, uh, will I do it the 10th, the 15th, or the 20th? Will I do it in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening? I should think, sir, as to that, five 
p.m. or shortly thereafter would be an excellent time. Results far more uh, gratifying. Uh, but the date, the date, well, that is important. I know I'll draw lots. <laughs> what a game. I'll take ten slips of paper, write a date on each one, put them in my hat, and then draw. C capital, capital. <laughs> well, what do you want, O'Neill? What any newspaper man wants, a story. Well, look, I haven't got time to tell you one. Who invited you here, anyway? Listen, Hank, have I got to go dig it out the hard way? Because you know I'm just a kid who can. Come on, tell me what's up. Well, could be we're looking for somebody. Who? The ghost of Christmas past. My buddy. Look, O'Neill, you know me, and you know I wouldn't hold back a story on you if there wasn't a whale of a good reason. Now, when the time comes, if it comes... It's no good to tell me it when it's old. It won't be old. And it'll read a lot better. You want me to go on prying till I find it out myself? You can't stop me, you know. No, no, I know I can't stop you. All right, all right, close that door. Now, look, what I'm going to tell you is not for publication. If you print one word of it, I'll have your head. The only reason I'm telling you is to keep you quiet. I'll have to be the judge look, of that. Look, this is off the record, O'Neill. Strictly off. And if you don't agree, you can get out of here now. Okay, okay, cool off. I got a job to do, too, you know. Right now, your only job is to shut up and listen. Hmm. Caught in the middle, huh? Yeah. Either he's a crank and we're wasting our time, or he means it and we're up against the horrible. Tomorrow's the 10th. What'd you do then? We go on looking. But suppose he tries that to come in... place will be watched from top to bottom. Well, it's being watched right now. Why not close it up for oh, 10 that'd days? that be next to impossible. And our friend would just wait till it was open again. You got a problem, chum. Yeah, you have too. Keep your mouth shut. Make pretty headlines. But seriously, don't you think the public has a right to be warned? Just how would you warn them? It's possible that sometime between the 10th and the 20th of this month, a man we don't know but whom we're looking for may attempt to... Hey, Captain McLean. Yes, Tom. Huh? Well, that's something. When? I see. Well, bring it down right away, will you? Bye. Good news? Maybe. An engineer from one of the chemical plants was committed to the state insane asylum six years ago. He was released last year, supposedly cured. Now, about telling your readers, don't. Not a word, O'Neill. You could start a first-class panic. I should think your fertile imagination could see that. Okay, okay, Hank. Know something? I don't envy you. Yeah. Oh, what a surprise it'll be. A lovely surprise. A red-letter day. Think of the headlines. And you, my beauty, will do it all. You will be the hand that deals the blow. The blow. I'll teach them, I'll teach them all. Laugh at me, would they? Wasn't good enough, eh? Now, I'm the one who laugh, and how I laugh. I wonder how many people are there on all this earth who could build a bomb big enough to blow up a... a railroad terminal. Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Captain Hank McLean in the proudly we hailed production Fair Warning, will return in just a moment for the second act. In 1917, our Air Force consisted of a half dozen flying flivvers attached to the aviation section of the Signal Corps. But in less than 35 years, these wood slats and canvas-covered planes have become gigantic aluminum planes, and our Air Force has developed into the most powerful in the world. The United States Air Force is still growing, and if you can qualify, you're needed to fly one of its new advanced aircraft. If you are between 20 and 26 and a half, with at least two years of college, in good physical condition, you can take aviation cadet training. Get all the details. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now with your star Conrad Nagel in the role of Captain Hank McLean, we present the second act of Fair Warning. Is that you, Hank? Yeah. Hey, you look dead. 
And don't tell anyone I am. Here, let me take your coat. No, Connie, I can't stay. Yeah. And I'd stop and get a cup of coffee. Mm, you know, you keep this up and your children will get to know you as the man who stops in once in a while for a cup of coffee. Yeah, lucky I can do that. How are they, Connie? In bed and asleep. How much longer is this going to go on, Hank? Connie, I don't know. Don't nag me. Do you think I like it? Why don't you go up to your mother's this week like you planned? Maybe the time you come back, it'll be over. Yeah, and you'll be dead and buried. <laughs> yeah. I... Well, I suppose there's no good in asking you what it is that... Connie, it's about a man who may or may not be planning to blow up the railroad station. There. Now close your mouth and don't be passing it on to the Hattons or anyone else. Blow up the... You mean Stratton Terminal? That's what I mean. Could I please have that cup of coffee? Oh, horrible. Why would anyone want Look, to blow... I don't know. I only know he's got to be caught. Oh, are there any leads? Is Millions it... of them. And they all end in the middle of nowhere. We thought we were onto something good this afternoon. <laughs> no good. No good. Any of it. Hello? This is Dom. Look, Hank, I think we've hit pay dirt this time. Polish lady who runs a grocery store and rents out rooms above. She's been telling us about a strange acting bird who's been living in her... Huh? No, he left yesterday, but... All right, I'll bring her right down. Sometimes I wake up in the night, I hear him laughing. He sounds like a uh, hyena. You know hyena, Captain. One time in, th in the movies, I see a picture... Yes, yes, I understand, Mrs. Dabrowski. Now, please go on, will you? Oh. Well, he never let me clean his room. He says he has important work to do. He put lock on the door, big like this. Sometimes I hear him work or do something, bang, 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 pound, bang. Sometimes he shouts. Yeah. Sometimes he just walk up and down, up well, and look, down. Well, didn't your other rumors complain? I have only two, and they both work at night, so they don't mind too much. How is it you didn't ask him to leave? Well, he... He pay good money for the room. He don't really bother nobody much, so I say maybe he's a little crazy in the head, but who ain't these days? Yeah, well, what made him decide to leave? I don't know. Yesterday morning, he come down in the store, his bag in his hand. He give me two weeks' rent. He tip his hat. He go, poof, like that. Yeah, well, now, Mrs. Dabrowski, from what you and some of your other neighbors have told us about his looks, we've had our artists try to draw a picture of him. Uh-huh. Uh, sure, that's guess, will you, Dom? Well, Mrs. Dabrowski... Does this resemble your rumor? Oh, that is him. That is the one. Why, oh, you never see him and you make a picture. That, that's magic. Yeah, well, is there anything that should be changed? Now, now look at it carefully. Hmm, I tell you, the mouth, it, it turned down here more a little. The, the nose is not quite so long. Good, good. Now, anything else? One thing maybe you should know. He always wear a kind of yellow scarf here at the neck. Yeah. Uh, makes no difference whether hot, cold, rain, snow. He always wears. Great, great. Mrs. Dabrowski, I could kiss you. Oh, <laughs> pleasure, Captain. Yeah, you've been a big help. <laughs> uh, what this poor fellow do? He kill someone? We hope not, Mrs. Dabrowski. We hope not. No doubt about it, Hank. He cleaned the room up pretty well, but the lab boys say it's him. There's plenty of evidence that this is where he built his bomb. The chief wants every paper in the city to carry his picture on the front page. He wants it there for the next ten days. There's to be a 24-hour watch on all luggage lockers. We'll have men at every baggage counter. All exits, all ramps to the trains, restrooms, soda fountains, every place in the terminal. I want men up there on those ramps with binoculars to watch the crowds. We've got to do this thing without getting people excited or aware they're in danger. Now, any questions? <laughs> Uh, boy, bo uh, a paper. Uh, you may keep the change. Ah, so the hounds are in full cry. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. How could they have gotten my picture? Oh, it's uh, not a bad likeness, eh? <laughs> I underestimated them. Well, I. They gave them fair warning, and now they return the courtesy. I think it would be wise to consider a new plan of attack. Well, that's one day we got through. Two down, eight to go. 
listen, after four days of this, I give up. How much longer do you think you can keep this up, Hank, for seven days? Tomorrow's the 20th. Tomorrow's the day he'll try. Yes, sir. I know that. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's right. But, sir, we've got proof that he did make a bomb. Well, no, no. Yeah, but the laboratory confirmed it. No, sir, no, nothing. Oh, I don't know, sir. Look, I'm only trying to keep a madman from killing four or 5,000 people. Just because he didn't make an attempt within the time he said he would doesn't mean he'll give up altogether. Uh, no. No, sir, I don't suppose we can. No, not if you say so. Right. So I understand. Bye, sir. Call it off? That's right. So just tell the men who have that beat to keep their eyes open. That's dandy. Well, it is the 22nd. Yeah. Guess you don't have a story, O'Neill. This is the one time when I don't care. No, don't give up hope. You may get a big one soon. Stratton Terminal blown up, thousands killed. You could go on watching that place for a year. Listen, if that duck is still in the city, and I believe he is, I could have him in another week. Ah, we made one bad mistake. We put his picture in the paper. He saw it, and he stayed undercover. All right, the 20th has passed. He knows we'll begin to figure he was just another crank. So we'll do just what I've been told to do. Take the men off it. Tell the few left on to keep their eyes open. Another routine job. Listen, Hank. You've been living with this thing too long. It's getting you down. Chances are good he's just a crank with a screw loose. Who made a bomb in his room to keep himself occupied. Well, I hope I'm wrong. I hope it's all been a wild goose chase. But I've got a horrible feeling that it's not. Bachelor Hood doesn't agree with you. Makes you more sour than usual. Yeah? <laughs> well, we'll put an end to that in a few minutes, Tom. Yeah. What time do they get in? 5.20. Yeah, you can slow up. They've been gone a long time, haven't they? Yeah, too long. Made over three weeks. I wish my old lady would take off for three weeks. Now, don't tell me your troubles. You know, every time I go near this station since that little episode last month, I get the willies. Yeah, I know what you mean. I didn't want Connie to come back with train, but the car's laid up and... Well, what are you going to do? Put the railroad station off limits forever? Funny we never latched on to that bird. Yeah, maybe seeing his picture in the paper scared him. Maybe he'll try it someplace else. <laughs> nice thought. Hey there! Pull over, you dumb truck! Ah, the way some people drive. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you take lessons? I'm a perfect driver. Say, you know something? Today's the 20th. An anniversary. We should celebrate. I wish... <gasps> What's the matter? Say, I just thought of something. You know, he... He said between the 10th and the 20th. But he didn't say what month. This place really gets crowded on a Friday night. Yeah, well, we've got another 10 minutes before the train gets in. Come on, we might as well wait for the gate over there. Track 24. You're jumpy as a cat. Well, I got a nasty mind, I guess. What did the chief... Say, what's the matter with you, Dom? Hey, look, look over there. Going up those steps. No, no, way over there, leading to the exit. There's a guy with a yellow scarf, and this ain't scarf weather. Come on, come on, Dom. He must have come out of here. Yeah, you go that way, I'll go this. No, 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 over there. Get him in that cab. Hey, wait, cab. Cab, stop, stop. Police, it's all right. It's him. Well, what's the meaning of this? Taking your hands off me. Let me go. Where is it? Where did you put it? Let go of it. Help. Take his other arm, Dom. All right, back to the station now. Quick. Seven Express. All right, now. Tell us where it is or you stay here and blow up with it. Let me out of here. Hey, we're beginning to attract attention. I don't care about that. Listen, you. I won't wait for it to go off. I'll choke the life out of you right here. Where is it? Where is it? Wait, wait, wait. Don't. Don't. Uh, I'll tell you. It's, it's in a locker on the lower level. What's the number of the locker? Well, I don't know. Let go of me. Where's the key? I threw it away. I threw it away. Look. When was it set for? 520. You can't stop it now. Only three minutes left. <laughs> Hold him, Don. Hold him. Right. I'll shoot the lock off. Now then, which locker? Which was it? We're all going to be blown up. I don't want to... Which locker, Let you? Let go of me. I don't want to blow up. 
It's that one. That one there. Let me go. Get the timing device out. No, no, it'll go off. Let me. Pull it away. It says 520. broken and I worked so hard to make it glad to have us back oh Connie Connie you'll never know and I'll never let you go again <laughs> I'll bet I told you six times, six times the train would be in at 5.20. Yeah. And you, you don't show up until a quarter of six. Fine husband. Oh, I know, I know. You were busy. Business. Honey, <laughs> if I'd been there at 5.20... Yeah? Well, you read all about it in your morning newspaper. And then we can thank God that we're still able to. <laughs> Star Conrad Nagel will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. Here's news that is good news to you college men, which means a wonderful new opportunity for you if you can qualify. First of all, you get your training with pay. You receive your silver wings and your commission as a second lieutenant, and then you fill an important Air Force job as a pilot, navigator, bombardier, radar observer, flight engineer, or electronics officer. For full information, visit your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station or nearest Air Force base today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly we hail stars Conrad Nagel. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Friends, we hope you join us next week for Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled Turnabout, and we journey to the Caribbean for a tale of treachery and a mysterious cargo aboard the schooner Marana. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>